friends. Welcome to another exciting meeting of the Coalition of Homeless Services Providers. Let's see. Um, Francisco, if you can hear us, can you give us a thumbs up? I can hear you. Great. Okay. And Greg, can you hear us well? Okay. Well, welcome everyone. We're very pleased to have you here. So let's kick it off with um, public comments. Do I have anyone that would like to make a comment for items not on the agenda with the two minute limit? Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, Wes White, Salinas Monterey County Homeless Union co-president, as well as uh, uh, lead committee member, uh, lived experience advisory directive. Um, checking in today because Salinas is, um, you know, inadvertently having Union Pacific do a sweep this coming week from the 26th to the 29th. Um, nobody's already allowed, already nobody is allowed not to be on public property anywhere within city limits. That's why they've all been driven to the train tracks. People are about to lose everything they have in the wet. It's going to be raining for the next two weeks at least. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's a huge burden and expense to the people that, that have signed up for cars and uh, should have some kind of immunity from these, um, these edicts. Uh, so, I guess, you know, there's, there's a lot of problem. I mean, you guys are kind of halfway legally liability offsetting the jurisdiction's addiction to harming people directly and putting them in a state-created danger. Um, you know, we, we really need to stop the sweeps. We should be supporting people, especially if they're signing for cars, to uh, have their own space, dignity, decency, and, and dominion over their own life. Uh, one way, shape, or form, whether it's a, an address on a parcel lot or just where they're at within their own personal confining space. Of course, organized space should be a big deal. Running water and electricity. I actually mentioned this to Jim Pia, who's the city manager of Salinas. And uh, he just, he was very rapidly angry. And, uh, you know, I could see him frothing at the mouth. And uh, it's, it's just really, you want to talk about gangs, you know, the League of Cities, Association of Counties, they all have this mindset that, that it, if you're too poor to afford rent, you shouldn't have anything. And that's just wrong. We, we did a, a sweep, position on sweeps in 2020. I'd like to see the, this body do something, you know, concretely at least in writing more to all the jurisdictions here locally uh, within our own continuum of care to stop the sweeps and allow people an address even if it's not on a parcel because we just need to stop the sweeps and actually start helping people. All right, well, chairperson comments. We are considering something that we will discuss in the membership meeting of having this leader, having this um, coalition board meeting every other month. We will um, discuss it and perhaps vote on it, but there is a chance if that does pass, there will be no meeting in March of the full board. We will have committee meetings going forward, but the board meeting will rotate every other month to the even numbered months. So that's a proposal we'll discuss in the closed meeting. In addition, there is a leadership council meeting one week from today on the 28th, and I know many of you are members of that. And Prior to that, we will have a formal announcement announcing the young Katrina as the new executive director formally. So that will go out in a press release in the next few days. Do I have any additions or modifications to the agenda for today? Uh, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we just got an email or a phone call saying that gathering from women for women cannot present today. Okay. And they'll reschedule. Okay. Thank you. Member updates. Let's go in alphabetical order, starting at the top. So get ready. Access support network. I don't really have any updates today. All right. Thank you. BACS. Cecil. Hi. Good morning. Um, no any updates other than you know you know anyone that needs assistance technology, please refer them to us. And we also have a TBA support group, so if anyone is interested in attending any of the TBA support groups, um, they can give us a call. Thank you. Chispa, City of Salinas. Good morning, everybody. Rod Powell, Assistant Director of Community Development. Um, the City of Salinas continues with its many uh, different homeless initiatives and projects. 
Um, we are actively onboarding staff on a continuous basis, having taken over the operations of our emergency shelter motel program internally, um, taking it on from Che's previous uh, management of the, of the sites. We're also continuing to work through the, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, the mess of the home key projects in Monterey County. Um, and there's not a lot of comment that can be made in that regard, but um, we are remaining positive and working forward in a positive action with both the state and the receivers, as well as our own external counsel. Um, just on a personal note, this will be my last meeting with the um, coalition. I am departing the city of Salinas on the 8th of March. I'll be moving over to the city of Hollister as their assistant city manager. The city of Salinas will be actively recruiting for both an assistant director and for a planning manager to work within both the affordable housing arena and the homeless services. It's been a fantastic uh, ride for me with all of you, and I appreciate all the support, the ingenuity, and most of all, the dedication that we have to unhoused individuals in the region. And that's it. Rod, best of luck as assistant city manager up in Hollister. We're very grateful for all you've contributed here. You were the first member from the city of Salinas. Recording in progress. You really brought a lot of principle and passion to the job, so we're very grateful for all you've contributed to the coalition. Best of luck in your new duties. And congratulations. Yeah. Well done, Rod. Community Homeless Solutions. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, I want to also echo that. Congratulations to Rod, and we'll see you up there in San Benito County, Rod. Um, Let's see, I have one announcement I'd like to make this morning, and that is the launch of our new wellness program. Uh, this program is designed to provide additional services to those in our shelters, and we're starting with mental health services, and we'll probably be moving into some of the healthcare services at, at some point as well. So we're excited about that, and just wanted to let you all know. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Community Human Services. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So um, we still have several positions open at CHS, and our programs are doing good. Our availability for the following programs, um, we have two beds available, and one uh, for single women and one family room at CAPSA um, that we're uh, hopefully going to be filling soon, as well as the five single women rooms and one family room at Schumann Heart House. We did have our first family transition out to transitional housing and we had our uh, first single women transition into permanent stable housing. Um, I believe it was last at the end of last month um, with her EHV voucher. We've got two beds that will hopefully be filled by the end of the day today at Safe Passage and then we'll be fully filled there. Safe Place um, will be getting tented um, this Friday through Monday, and we'll be, we're currently working on a price with one of our partnered hotels so that we were able to put the uh, youth in the hotel over the weekend during that time. We also have a pros uh, prospective site near Chinatown for Safe Place Salinas, our youth navigation center that we've been work trying to do for what, maybe the last over a year now, trying to get a site in Greenfield that didn't work out. Uh, but this new site will be similar to Monterey, uh, safe place, and to have a drop-in center, you know, supportive services, case management, donations, food, and be our home base for our Selena Street Outreach Program. It will have uh, a lobby, to, a lobby uh, client computers, two private offices, and a larger communal space um, with a smaller kitchen area, storage, and a lounge for our youth. So that's exciting news. Um, we also have our Casa Noche Buena's third anniversary um, event coming up. It's going to be called Solving Homelessness, a community conversation. Um, we have speakers. We have Roxanne Wilson, Anastasia Wyatt, and Sarah Reuven, who's going to be there. We're going to have a reception that's going to follow. That's going to be on March 14th from 2 to 4 at the Carpenter Hall Sunset Center in Carmel. 
um, that is open to the public. Um, from what I understand, you don't have to register for it. You can just show up. And um, we also have, will be, Safe Place will be recognized on Monday, February 26th as a key partner to NPC's Basic Needs Center. And I believe that's at 4 o'clock. And then lastly, um, we do have, or there is a town hall meeting on Thursday, February 29th, next week at the Oldermeyer Center in Seaside. Um, we'll there talk about the plans for CASA uh, during the Department of Social Services uh, uh, building, the new building that they're, um, that they're talking about. So if you can make it out there, that would be great. And I believe that's it. Thank you. The CSUMB, the Chain Center. I know Dorothy's place is here. Well, at least I'm here um, representing Dorothy's place. Good morning, everybody. Uh, really a short report today. The thing that I would really like to call out is our fantastic partnership, our relatively new partnership um, with Closer Walk. Uh, which is a ministry and services-based organization in Chinatown. Their volunteers have now taken over the operation of our drop-in center, and it is looking really wonderful there. They are able to supply far more people to work with our consumers than we could supply staff, and the consumers are really enjoying that. Uh, they're enjoying the very friendly atmosphere and the very interactive atmosphere. And I just think they're fantastic partners. And I wanted to do a shout out to say they're doing a fantastic service for Dorothy's Place and our mutual consumers. Thank you. Thank you. Downtown Streets. Hi, everybody. Quick update today. Uh, so far, this uh, fiscal year, we have housed 20 households, which translates to 26 adults and 18 children. Um, that is the main update. We're accelerating uh, year two of our HHAP funding so we can continue housing folks this year because we still have a wait list. And the other update is that we are going to start piloting a collaboration with Pair Team to utilize their mental health and medical services to kind of supplement our case management services. So I will let everybody know how that goes. We should be starting this week. And that's all, thank you. Thank you, Eden Housing, Gathering for Women, Housing Authority of Monterey County, Hackham, HRC. Well, we are here, so I will give my update. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Alexa Johnson here from Housing Resource Center. Um, a few updates for us. Um, we did receive our Landlord Gold Standard funding that we used for our Landlord program. We received that money through MC Gives. So we are stocked up for 2024. Um, we had more people donate to that program than ever in years past for our Landlord program. Um, the funds were a little bit lower than in years past. I don't know, maybe that's inflation, um, but we are Kind of looking to apply for different funding to kind of help supplement the difference. Um, we are seeing some uh, state budget cuts throughout all of our programs. Um, so far we're able to keep the same services for all of our folks, our unhoused folks, um, but it, so far the quantity, how many times folks receive those services are changing. So if we have any kind of mutual clients or cases um, with your agency, just know if there's ever any confusion to them. Hey, I had a friend, they received the service. How come I'm not? Um, that's likely why. And then lastly, um, kind of short updates as well. Um, we are pending to house 13 families this month. So we're really excited about that for, across all of our programs. So we're really hoping that despite any sort of um, cuts in the state budgets and just some of the other barriers that you know, the agencies come up against for housing and homelessness, that we're able to continue housing people as normal. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Interfaith Outreach of Carmel. I have no report. Okay, thank you. Interim. Good morning, everyone. Sophia Keir here from Interim. Um, 
So our HHAP3 program is an emergency, emergency shelter program um, with folks housed in a motel. Um, we are still looking for permanent housing solutions for those individuals. They're all on wait lists. They have all their documents, um, but we are having a hard time finding um, housing to accept them. Um, so if you know of anything, please feel free to send me an email. Um, we have our open house for our solo dead office, and I'll put the address um, into the chat in a minute because it's kind of long, but it's 2149H De La Rosa, Suites 203 in solo dead, um, and that is on Wednesday. February 28th at 11 a.m. Food will be provided along with tours in English and Spanish. Um, and please share with those who live in South uh, County and who are interested in mental health services um, in that region. And our annual Green and Gold Shindig at Omni Resource Center, which is at 339 Pajaro Street, is on Friday, March 15th at 1 p.m. Um, please share that as well. Thank you, Sophie. Meals on Wheels of Monterey Peninsula. Ms. Penn, Housing, Monterey County Department of Social Services. Hi, good morning, Lauren Suansupa with Department of Social Services. Um, very few updates for you. Um, just a, you know, a, a, a plug or a reminder that um, Department of Social Services is working on submitting the HHAP5 application for our community on behalf of the County of Monterey. Uh, we are also um, just very thankful and encourage you to continue participating for inclement weather response. Thank you for all of your work during these storms that we've had. Please continue to make sure that you're providing information about shelter beds available to the coalition, and keeping an eye out for these announcements. As a reminder, the policy for inclement weather did change this year and the authorization to utilize vouchers is um, only approved through that messaging that the coalition is putting out. Um, I also just want to put out a plug for all of your, your direct service providing agencies that we are um, on the final push of the uh, 2024 Homeless Services Resource Guide and that we will be having uh, different per uh, people who are helping us um, complete this guide reaching out to organizations to verify the information in there. Please, please, um, if you can help us uh, verify the contact information, the name of your program, how you want people to be reached, how you want your program to be listed in that guide it is essential. We're really trying to make sure that we're putting out quality information that's useful, well-organized, relevant, and active. So please, um, Please help us if you get a call from um, a work group person trying to verify this information. Help us out, just making sure that that information is correct. Um, and then my last update, I um, wasn't really sure I was going to provide the update, but seeing as we're not meeting for two uh, for another month, and I'd rather you hear it from me. I do just want to give an announcement that um, I am accepting a, a position in another area of our department. I'm not leaving DSS, but I'm no longer going to be in the role of the community affiliation manager. I am very excited about an opportunity, but I am going to be a bit more in the finance area. So I am in the meantime of the transition. I am still your person, so please don't hesitate to reach out. But you guys also know who to contact within uh, our unit with Alex and Adriana. Uh, thank you. And Alex has put his contact information there about the Homeless Services Resource Guide. Well, Lauren, a, a preemptive congratulations to you, so thank you. Thank you. Monterey County Office of Education. Good morning, everybody. Wow, Lauren, <laughs> I'm really happy for you. I just want to say that. Um, so I just want to do a shout out, a, a thank you to Community uh, Human Services and the Sure Center, I was able to take some of our liaisons from our school districts and our community members to um, visit the shelters so they could see where our families are staying and make those connections with the case managers at those shelters. So I just want to thank you for allowing us to come there and tour, and you were so gracious. So anyway, thank you. That's it. Thank you, San Benito County, HHS. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. 
Uh, just a few updates. So I had reported before that we had some rehabilitation of the shelter. It looks really good. We actually have a little bit more funds, and we're going to do a, a, a couple other rehab projects either to the front, um, just to the uh, courtyard or even a shaded canopy. You know, there's a, a very strong need, you know, for that. So um, if we ever have a meeting here, a live meeting in San Pedro County, we'd love to give a tour just to look at, you know, the new or rehab uh, shelter. Also, we're still uh, working with the winter shelter program. We have about 19 or 20 families of which seven are families that were displaced due to a fire in a few apartment complexes here in Hollister. Uh, it's it's uh, moving forward. The program will end towards the end of next month um, and staff is working hard to get them housed. We're also working with Monterey County and the Coalition of Homeless Service Providers for the HHAP application and also working on our PLHA application. And just uh, the last, just a shout out to, to Applied Survey Research and the Coalition of Homeless Service Providers for uh, all the support in our point in time count. Uh, I thought it was very successful. We had more than enough volunteers. We had the support of the city of Hollister police department for the river areas and the uh, sheriff's department uh, also in other sections of the area we had great coverage it was a very good event and uh, just a shout out for all the good work of everyone thank you thank you enrique sun street center salvation army good morning everyone jennifer miller for salvation army filling in last minute for major john um just a quick update for us at our good samaritan center we're really excited to keep focusing on collaborations with agencies um, coming to provide some outreach here at our center. So we're happy to have had Valley Health Associates join us. Um, and we continue to work with Clinica de Salud. They'll be here next week with their mobile clinic. So we're excited to keep offering additional services um, to those that come to our center. And just a heads up for our housing department, we are severely understaffed right now. We're in the process of trying to hire on. Um, so just the screening and application process is taking a little bit longer for any of you who are referring uh, families with children over to our housing programs. It's just taking a little bit longer. We have less, 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 less staff to um, be getting families moved in. So thank you for your patience with that. Jennifer, are you hiring for new positions? And if so, what, what are you looking for? Yes, so we're hiring for a program assistant in our housing department and also a resident service coordinator. Um, and then also at our Good Samaritan Center, we're hiring for a caseworker. So those are all posted on Salami Shami's website and on Indeed. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Veterans Transition Center, Lifefighter Village continues. That will, in January of this coming year, it will add 70 units of permanent supportive housing to the inventory. And the roof is up, the walls are going in, everything is on track for that. In addition, VTC over the last 12 months, across six housing programs, has had an average occupancy rate of 87% across all programs and an average number of bed days per month of 2,500. So we've had as high as 2,800 in a month, but um, we're shooting for 90% in all our programs as an average. That's it for BTC. YWCA. Do I have anybody we missed that would like to speak? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Dana from Chispa. I can speak just briefly. Um, we are leasing our East... Alfred Diaz and Vante apartments out in East Garrison. Um, of the 65 units we've rented now, uh, about 34. So we're filling it up and expect by the end of the month or middle of, in the end of next month, we should be close to full. Thank you, Dana. And as far as word of the day, I think it's phrase of the day. It came from Wes. Um, dignity, decency, and dominion. And what I'm very proud to hear within our, our groups is the interaction and cooperation that's taking place among the members. That is really the whole point of the coalition. 
So I'm very pleased to see that we're working with each other and we're sharing resources and information to better mitigate the homeless problem in Monterey and San Benito counties. So thank you all for that. All right, the member presentation, we will defer till next time. So we'll move right into the coalition updates. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, if we could get our next slide. Be providing the updates here. So we just launched our um, HHAP for RFLP. And if Kirsten can jump on to present this portion. Hi, everybody. Good morning. So um, the press release, along with the request for local proposal, was released on February 9th followed with a mandatory bidders conference that was just held last week on February 15th. Upon completion of the mandatory bidders conference, all agencies who have signed up will receive or have already received the letter of intent um, to be submitted by February 22nd at 5 p.m. And the application to apply will soon follow with the release date of February 28th, 2024 and will be due March 27th. 2024. Okay, so the CLC received $3.1 million in HHAP4 funds. Of that amount, $944,000 has already been obligated for the following. King City Monarch Inn received $50,000. CSUMB CHE, $255,000. Uh, the administrative entity, which is CHSP, received $223,000. The governance support of the CLC committees and operations. $159,000 and, of course, $255,000 to support CARS and HMIS. There was a total of $2.2 million for this request for local proposal, which does include the $319,000 required for the youth set aside. The approximate county allocations comes to one point five for Monterey County, $335,000 for San Benito. And the amounts you want to keep in mind are of the county's proportionate share of the homeless population as reported in the pit count for 2022. And below we have our list of eligible activities which include rental assistance, rapid rehousing projects, operating subsidies, delivery of permanent housing and innovative housing solutions, interim sheltering and improvements to existing shelters. Here we have our COC awards that were released from the NOFO HUD. Actually just released these at the end of January, and they are also located on HUD's website slash press release. Uh, let's see, it looks like all of the agencies that did apply received an award, um, and you can see all of the amounts listed for the awarded amount against the subtotal requested and then the grand total requested. And then for our COC awards, um, I believe this is the first year YWA, YWCA was funded. Is that correct? Did we have YWCA? They're not here. Well, congratulations to them and everybody else that was funded in our 2023 um, Continuum of Care Awards. Moving on to our sheltered um, housing inventory count and point in time count. So this is an activity that happens every year and right now we are um, collecting all the documents from our agencies. Um, there is a deadline coming up and Oliver if you can speak to that. Yeah so we're still waiting on um, nine agencies to submit their forms for both HIC and PIT. Um, I want to say the deadline is going to be March 28th so we just need to go over the data these forms were due on the fifth of this month so we still need to reconcile the data and um, make sure that everything is as accurate as possible before we submit right next slide um okay for our unsheltered count just echoing Enrique, uh, this year was the first year that we have, we hit our 200 um, volunteer goal and even exceeded it. So um, congratulations to the network, to our community members, um, and everyone who participated. We were able to cover all tracks um, in Monterey and San Benito County. And right now we're in the midst of collecting all of the 
unsheltered and sheltered surveys in the community. So um, if you guys have shelters out, um, surveys out there, please make sure that you guys submit them to the coalition by this Friday because they're due to ASR on Tuesday. So um, we want to make sure that everybody gets paid out for the time that they put in and that we're receiving all the surveys that you guys and your team members um, are administering. What do we Go expect the, the PIP report, Jiminy? June. Okay. We're looking to June um, because for um, they have to do the unsheltered and the sheltered count. So they already have all the the unsheltered numbers. They're they're going through all of that. Um, and once then March will come. That's the deadline for all of our internal work um, to be done and submitted over to ASR so that we can then submit to the state of the federal government. Sorry. Thank you. So we've been talking about it since October. We're in the thick of our coordinated entry overhaul. So we'll be having our in-person meetings, um, in-person focus groups tomorrow. So thank you to VTC, United Way, and um, San Benito County's Health and Human Services Department for opening up your space so that we can hold in-person uh, focus group meetings uh, for those with lived experience. Um, and for our service provider network, they'll be taking place on the 26th and the 28th, and you all should have been contacted already. If you guys signed up for a focus group and have not been contacted, please reach out to me and I can assure that we get you uh, registered or finalized. Um, we did have some virtual interviews taking place um, that has taken place last week between stakeholders and CHSP staff as well. So um, thank you to everyone who has participated in moving um, the reconfiguration of our coordinated entry process. So our new CARS uh, youth assessment tool uh, will be replacing the taste at and this launch will take next Monday. So there was an email blast that was sent out about um, enrolling into the course on Talent LMS. If um, your staff has not received that, please just send us a case ticket and we will coordinate the enrollment process. So anyone who is using CARS for youth right now, just please hold off on it. Try to reschedule because you would end up having to do it again with the new system that's launching on the 26th, just as a friendly reminder. Yes, and um, there were at least 32 um, users that, in, that attended the live training this past week. Um, so for those that attended, they will not need to take the Talent LMS course. Um, we're just asking for them to, for everyone else that will be doing CARS assessment to have that complete by this Friday. Um, secondly, we have been looking at our referral rates, strategizing on that, and we have increased the um, rates of enrollment. So from January 1st, 2016 until October 31st, 2023, our enrollment rate was at 19%. Since then, we have brought it up um, increasingly each month to 32%. And then in January alone, we had increased it uh, up until 42%. So right now we are overall at 23%. Um, but kind of strategizing with San Benito County, using that system, that workflow, implementing it into the um, other programs that are collaborating, we have been able to see a higher rate. Thank you, Oliver. Robin? Good morning, Oliver. So for seven years, it was 19% steadily, like month after month or period after that's, period? That, that's me going over the data that's in the system right now. 
So is that an average of the seven years, or is that actually steady? It seems odd that it would be steady for seven years. I didn't look at it month by month for over the seven years. I just looked at it for the months that I had been overseeing the program from November 1st. So so what does that mean, though? The enrollment rate remains steady at 19% for that seven-year period. I don't know what that means. Well, that's what just that was that was our overall. So for the referrals that were sent out, the acceptance was at 19%. Okay, so it's an average of that seven years. Yes. Okay, then it didn't remain steady. It's an average, just pointing that out. A little update on our uh, staffing. So um, our governance quarter, Ma coordinator, Mufnor, resigned. Yesterday was her last day. Um, in addition to that, um, our YLE coordinator, I'm sorry, this isn't updated, also um, resigned and her last day was Friday. So um, we'll be re-evaluating CHSP's um, job descriptions and um, getting those new, those open positions out in addition to changing uh, um, and posting a, a position for a deputy director by the end of this month. Um, during the absence of Mucknor and our YLE coordinator, um, and you guys continue to contact me, but um, these are the people you should reach out to when trying to get a hold of us. Oliver would be for HMIS and coordinated entry, um, Kirsten for all of our HAP contracting, and then everything else. Just come to me. I'm here. And that's it. Um, thank you guys for listening, and um, please ask away if you have any questions. Katrina, this is Donna. I have a question for you. Uh, all the, uh, the, a lot of the school districts gave me their numbers for the pit count, and I, I sent them to, is it John? Yes. John. Should I have sent them to you guys as well, or will that be okay? No, that's fine. Um, he, he's looped us in on all the conversations that are taking place outside of us. Okay. So much okay. for checking in, though, Donna. Of course. And for all the hard work that you did. I know coordinating um, the McKinney Vento side is a lot of work, so I appreciate you and your staff. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, we will wrap up the public meeting. Again, I wanted to thank all of the participants for the collaboration and partnerships that are emerging. I'm looking at our mission here, and it says the mission of the coalition is to eliminate homelessness in Monterey and San Benito counties by promoting regional partnerships and interagency collaboration for a comprehensive system of housing for our diverse population. And I'm very proud of all the groups here that are working to bring that mission to reality. So thank you all very much.